Oh man, it's hot, right? It's only gonna get hotter. No, I really mean it, it's only gonna get hotter. A blazing fire is gonna run through this land and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great for those who seek and are seeking the Lord diligently. This world is, is it's turning upside down, man. It's insane. AI, all these things that are happening. And uh, it spoke in the book of Daniel that they will be running to and fro. And knowledge will increase in those days. In the last days. I just want to give a shout out to the people of the highlighters to the people of the dividers, of the notebooks, the people that choose to read their word instead of watch TV, the ones who minister to those that, that perhaps might not. This message is for you. It's for me. It's for everyone with the fire of God. Um, the cool thing about fire is if you're close enough, it might just get you. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it should be given as well. You know, some, some of us might have buildings of stone and gold and precious metals, and some of us might be just wood, hay, and straw. Not only here, but in the entire body of Christ as a whole in this world. But if you stand close enough, those of them that are wood, hay, and straw, to those that are of fire, perhaps they might just get lit up too. Let's open up in prayer. Bow our heads. And it's a prayer of King Solomon. Oh, sorry, David. And now, O Lord God, you are God. And your words are true. And you have promised this goodness to your servant. Now therefore let it please you to bless this house of your servants. That it may continue before you forever. For you, O Lord God, have spoken it. And with your blessing, let the house of your servants be blessed forever. Amen. not sure if I said the title already, but the title is Surrender to the Flame. Surrender to the Flame. We're going to open up in the book of Malachi, chapter 4. From the moment the first oracles of God were given unto man up to this very point unto this very instance the message has been the same repent turn from worthless things turn to your God right many times in many circumstances people have been killed for that people have been killed horrible deaths for that simple truth but it was the fire that they surrendered to themselves that ignited the willingness to spread that fire so that others may surrender to it as well you see it's getting hot bro it's getting real hot but don't think it's strange when it gets this hot it's for a reason. In Malachi chapter 4, it reads, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud 
Yes. All who do wickedly will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. Ashes, huh? Why didn't it just say dirt? On the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts, Now here it is though. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Least I come and strike the earth with a curse. I made mention of this AI, this artificial intelligence that is spreading abroad, this, this chip and this card that you no longer need any sort of identification. It's all in here. It's all in your hand. And now it's like a card with a chip on it where it takes your fingerprint. So even if somebody steals your card, they can't use it because it detects your fingerprint. And I seen that and I was like, oh my guy, that's crazy. But you see, technology, it's, it's, it's like a child. You know what I mean? It's not until you start downloading a whole bunch of crazy stuff onto your computer that it picks up the viruses, <laughs> right? But if you maintain the computer in a very simple state, you don't download crazy, you don't accept cookies, you, know, you don't do these things, and you just maintain it as what it's supposed to run like, it'll be okay. It's used as a tool to enhance and, 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 and to enhance what we're doing here, right? It's the heart of man. It's the heart of man that disrupt, that disturbs that. They think AI and they're like, "Oh, war. Perfect soldier. That's insane. Even the natural use of the members of a male and a female. Love, it, it's not going to exist. True love is not going gonna, is not gonna to exist. And we're, this generation that is being born, they're going to be born into that. So they're not going to know. That's why I'm telling you, I ur I'm urging you today, that those of you that have that flame that has been kindled in, inside of you, that it might just be a little short flame. Surrender to it. It might burn. It might feel discomfort. You might feel, ugh. But surrender to it so that it can fully envelop you. So that you, these, this generation see you and be like, what is that? Second Timothy chapter three. <laughs> but know this that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Wow, that one got me. Unthankful puts me in this category. Unholy. 
unloving. Another one that puts me in this category. I deal with it. Do you? Unforgiving. Slanders. Without self-control, brutal. Despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Janus and Jambres were these sorcerers in the time of Moses. When Moses came and was speaking to Pharaoh, and uh, they're the ones who were mimicking the plagues of God. But there were some that they just couldn't quite get. And they themselves even said, man, this must certainly be the finger of God, right? There are a lot of things in this world that may seem God-like. Oh, this is a great life. Come here. Come on this side. Right? But it's what's going on in the unseen world. That's what we're, we need to be striving for. Because, again, from the beginning that the first oracles of God came unto men, until now, this is the message. To not fall for these things. Not to be deceived by the deceit that this world gives us. Regardless of what we're going through, stand. And know what God has told you. Not you and your wife, not you and your friends, not you and your family, or perhaps even your children. You. What God has told you. You are what's going to make a difference through Christ when it gets real hot. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 3. Starting in verse 14. When you read this, it says, the lukewarm church. Perhaps it's a state of mind. I read it as a state of mind, appropriation. Whenever I'm feeling like I'm in or out, in and out, in and out. Straddling the fence so long, my butt starts to hurt. That's real. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, says the Amen. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. Cold is someone who is destitute of desire. Destitute of desire. Cold. And of course, hot being the complete opposite, is it's a mind full of zeal for God. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. That sounds very familiar when you step outside these doors and you go meet these people. It's sad. It's sad. It's true, though. You, talk, you try to tell them about the Lord, and they're like, no, nah, I'm good. Or, I don't know. But they look at their life, and they see that they have a car and a house, and they're all good, right? 
they don't find the need of a savior. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. I did a study on that a while back. I'm not going to get into that, but you should. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. See, there's that burning. There's a burning inside of us that not only wants to spread the word of God and want to speak on behalf of the Lord, but there's, there's also a burning of conviction whenever we're not walking with the Lord as we should. We should embrace that. Because that only lets us know that He loves us. He chastises those whom He loves. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and her. And dine with him or her and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Matthew 25, please. <coughs> Starting in verse 8. Now this is the parable of uh, ten virgins. Hear it a lot. Five wise, five foolish. But yet, how are the foolish ones still virgins? In verse eight, it says, "And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, of our, for our lamps are going out.'" You see, the bridegroom was coming at this time. And the oil for their lamps were running out. See, there's going to be a day when Jesus comes back. And this whole time that we've been with the highlighters and the color pencils and the studying the word and diligently seeking him in prayer and fasting day in and day out, that is what maintains this lamp filled and trimmed full but if you're not if they don't what they do have will be lost see the reason why these foolish virgins didn't have a full lamp was because they were relying on false hopes things of this world that, that have no longevity I guess that don't have any any substance but yet they were still called virgins again another perspective another state of being you have a true virgin that its lamp was full full of the word of God and then you have one that seemed on the outside like a virgin but yet the inside was slowly running out in time of trouble Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, No. <laughs> I love that. I don't know why. I just do. At least there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those sell and buy for yourselves. See, there's a responsibility that comes with this life. We are individually responsible for our own salvation. Amen. 
Yes, iron sharpens iron, and we edify one another, and we lift each other up. But when it comes down to it, what you got? Where are you? Where am I? Where, where am I in my walk with the Lord? Where am I with God? Verse 10. And while they went to buy, Jesus came. I'm just going <laughs> to make it easy. And those who were ready went in with him to, the, to heaven. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Let's turn to 24, chapter right before. Verse 23. Then, knowing these things, right? No one knows the time or the hour, right? Then, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. And you'll know why. In that moment, you'll know why. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Meaning, it's not possible. But that's how strong these, these, these tactics are going to be. That those that aren't trained in the word will fall by the word. Now, let's continue. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, verse 9, please. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth. That they might be saved. And for this reason... God, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. So we know that once these signs and these wonders and when this these illusions of, of, of good to make one wise start happening I'm not saying to judge off rip but I'm not I'm also saying not to jump right into it either discern discern the times with the Holy Spirit that is that is in you Malachi chapter 3, please. I know, I'm not sure what type of message you guys were expecting, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, right? It's the Word of God. We stand by this. But as a church, we, have, we, we must strive. We must strive for unity. Especially in these times. If you were to die today, 
I told that to a brother one time. If you were to die today, where would you go? Do you know you'll go to heaven? And that goes, that goes for anybody you come across. Do you know that you know that you will be with the Father in eternal life? There's a Holy Spirit of promise that tells you you are. Perhaps you might have a little trouble hearing him at times. Well then, enhance it. Get in your word. I know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord called every one of you here. There's no coincidence. Verse 1 in Malachi says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Who's his messenger? Here it's talking of, this, of, of John the Baptist. But if these oracles have been being passed down from the beginning of time, then it's just a generational thing. You, you are the messenger of God as well. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Who's the temple? You. You are the temple of God. Suddenly come to his temple in the twinkle of an eye. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? I know someone that can and will. And that's my big brother, Jesus Christ. Because it's him. And if him who is coming, it says he will suddenly come to his temple. Hmm. He appears. For he is like a refiner's fire. And like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, the priestlyhood, the priestly nation. You, now, spiritually. And purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. That offering, brothers and sisters, that's, that's your life. A burnt offering. It's complete. It's completely consumed. It's an offering that is completely consumed. We give our hearts to Him wholeheartedly, not half heartedly. Matthew chapter 11. We're going to start in verse uh, 8. But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. Soft like linen, nice apparel. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes. I say to you, and more than a prophet, for this, for this, is he of whom it is written. Behold, I said my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. First Kings eighteen. A 
again, guys, let not the words of those who speak the truth of God fall on deaf ears. Take heed. Take heed to the message. Now this is uh, an account of Elijah. And we all know it. But something stood out to me yesterday night when I had hit it. Um, I want to share it with you. But first I want to ask you the same question he asked them. In verse 20. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel. Now this is God's people. And gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. Those who speak on behalf of the Lord as well. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long? How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is your God, follow him. But if Baal... Follow him. But the people answered him not a word. We go through the account and it talks about the burnt offering. They start doing some insane stuff to themselves and to whatever sorcery to try to light up this altar that they've set up for the Lord. And Elijah at some point tries them. It's hilarious. You should read it. Um, but before Elijah brought fire from heaven I, he said something and this is what stuck out to me last night let's turn to verse 36 here it is yes it shows it okay so it's not for not look at the look at the lettering I believe in our books, in verse 36, I'll get to this. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Perhaps in your Bible it's italicized. I believe that's how it's called. It's italicized. Why? Why? Because there's a significance to it. So I'm pondering in my head. There's a time, the day of the Lord, Right? evening as a thief in the night oh boy now we're getting somewhere right the son of man shall come right like a thief in the night so I chose to appropriate it to my life and it says and it came to pass in the day of the Lord that the offering my life me the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. So now, if we're appropriating this as the end times, because nothing changes. God don't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? So what happened then will happen now. Just in this instance, it's talking about us. Our heart is that evening sacrifice. That's our prayer towards God. In that moment that that prayer was said, in the moment that that day came and that time came, the sacrifice was lit up. You will trample the, their ashes under the soles of your feet? Whoa, wait a minute. You know, I read that and I thought of the Fantastic Four, the guy who's like, flame on! <laughs> right? Like the prayer, instead of the prayer, he just said flame on and he lit up. Maybe it'll look like Jesus in that picture with the flame around him. 
in the spirit realm? Who knows, right? Let's turn to um, Malachi chapter 3 again, please. Surrender to the flame. Verse 5. I'm sorry, the start in verse 4. Then the offering, <laughs> then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem, right, will be pleasant to the Lord. As in the days of old, as in former days, years, and I will come near you for judgment. <coughs> near is within. I will come within you. Um, I'm like this big compared to like people that know the word of God. I'm like you can't. I'm not even on the charts, bro. Like you know when you start a new game and you look at the scoreboard, it's your name and three dots. Like you don't even have a number yet. Like that's that's where I'm at. I'm like Fernando, three dots. Like it's pending, right? <laughs> and uh, but to me. It's as if he were to come inside our hearts. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. All flesh for judgment. So when his spirit comes within us, it knows what's in us. It knows what we've been doing this whole time. And it's going to consume what is not of him. And that what is of him will remain and I will come near you for judgment I will be a swift witness I'm talking about in the twinkle of an eye immediately you know why I'll get there against sorcerers against adulterers against perjurers against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans and against those who turn away an alien or a stranger because they do not fear me says the Lord of hosts first Corinthians chapter 3 Starting in verse 9. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which has given to me, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. And Another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. So in our minds, we have this building for the Lord, right? That we're, we're building. And a brother was explaining, well, years ago, how, what are we building our house with? Is it like worldly things? Like, there are rooms in here. In the temple of the Lord, there are rooms in there. What are we filling our rooms with? Monetary things, money, cars, fame, pride. Like, what's, what's more important right now? For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, all these things that people are going to try to deceive you with, these foundations are not sturdy. You can't build on them. It's like a house built on sand. I read that somewhere.
Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, verse 12, with gold, silver, or precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, regardless of what you build this house with, each one's work, what type of work are they talking about right there? Like, how many how, houses are pressure cleaned? No. It's talking about the works that you put in spiritually. Right? Spiritual works. Will become clear. For the day will declare it. Because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. You know, I'm talking about you turn the TV on and it's, there's this and there's this and there's this and then this and how about this? No, it's this. No, it's this. Yeah, it's this. If it ain't this, it ain't nothing. Regardless of what anybody has to say, regardless of how many numbers they have next to their name, Still your opinion. It says test all things. Everything. Even if it bears witness with you, right? Through straight revelation. I'm talking about <laughs> download. And you're like, oh! Test it. Everything. Test it. Verse 14, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. Now, mind you, all this is happening. Like, read, you can read the context of what Paul is talking about and just think of yourself just lit, just straight up on fire, like literal fire. Think of your body on fire, your spirit, your soul burning. Just, And if you're built on the Lord, you're just... What's going on? Don't go back. Don't if you're in the field, don't go back and get some clothes. If you're on the housetops, don't go back, go don't don't go back in the house and get your goods. Just be still. Why? Why? Oh, he's coming. Okay, he's coming. Flame on! That's what's gonna happen. Like that's what's gonna happen. You don't there's no time. That's why we trust in what he says. Because we'll know when it's that time. Why? Because there'll be a whole bunch of the remnant of God just on fire, burning things up, straight up, bro. <laughs> Prophesying and speaking in tongues and the spirit of, and doing these miracles. Like that's that's how we know when the fullness of times has come. Do not worry. For the time being, just tranquiliza. Be still. Stay in your word. Stay faithful. Stay serving. Yeah, I get it. But, but stay in that. Fifteen. Sorry, fourteen again. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. The reward of eternal life. The reward of, of pureness purity of a virgin the, the, to be able to be considered holy and, and for Jesus just for him this is all I want oh but wait I'm not a virgin Fernando I'm not a virgin no more well if you're born again and you live for Christ and you do not give your heart to false idols then you are a virgin you keep him oh but it says like he's the bridegroom so does that make us the bride well yeah and by no means am I giving heed to this alphabet doctrine. That's my flag. That flag was given to me by promise. I'm taking it back. But what I'm saying is the reward is Christ. We are the church of Christ. That's the bride, his church. And together, through unity, through 
strengthening one another and edifying one another. That's how we're going to endure in the end times. This message is being preached around the world. There are the body of Christ. There is. And what's always being said is, we're the last ones left. Elijah said that. All the way back then. And the Lord was like, nah, chill. But it's getting bad. It's up to us. I, I strongly believe that it's up to us to just get it. Just get it. And move forward. Regardless of what people do to you. Regardless of, of how you even think of yourself. Wrap yourself in the truth of God. And just live it. Peacefully and comfortably. Under the fig tree like it says. Under the fig tree is like an, a, a rabbinical idiom. To live a peaceful and quiet life. Waiting on him to come. Don't worry about the things of this world. Just wait. Continue doing what you're doing. And love one another. Because love is what it's all about. We're going to end in uh, Jeremiah 17. Uh, 7, verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit there's a beautiful proverb there's a beautiful proverb about iron sharpening iron and I didn't notice the second half I believe it's the second half if not um, the very next verse we can go there it's not part of the message but I want to share something with you and it's what inspired this I had no idea what to do I had to go back in the archives bro I was like what's going on bro let's go to Proverbs 27 real quick please I believe it's verse 17 it starts <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Okay, so 17. As iron sharpens iron, so man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Like, yeah, fellowship. But there's a fellowship within you. The Word of God is a sword. Iron, right? We are also known and referred to as various metals. So it's the Word of God that sharpens us. Right? Like iron sharpening iron. And then with that same action, right? <coughs> what happens when you rub iron together? Not only does it get hot, but it creates a spark, don't it? Like a flint. Edifying. Edifying one another. Lifting up each other. But here it is. Whoever keeps the fig tree. Amazing. Will eat its fruit. So he who <coughs> waits on his master will be honored. He who keeps is one who protects, one who observes the fig tree. The fig tree, again, this is that same idiom. He it's 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 the will of God. It's, it's the timing of God. The, it's everything God purposed in life is represented here as this fig tree. If we maintain it, there's a prophet, Amos, that says, for I'm not a prophet, nor was I the son of a prophet. I'm just a tender of sycamore fruit. A sycamore is a fig tree. <laughs> I'm a tender of sycamore fruit. 
And that's who he picked to spread the message along the nations. If we keep this fig tree, if we keep this lifestyle, we will eat its fruit, which is the reward. And then you have a little semicolon, I guess. It, you, it's used to represent the answer of what that means in the very following writing. It says, so he who waits on his master will be honored. As in water, face reflects face. So a man's heart <coughs> reveals the man. <coughs> That's all I got right now. <laughs> Quinn, come for yourself, please. <coughs> Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Be blessed. Amen.